my people what's good welcome back to the channel welcome to patala fc we are within and preseason lurks as much as our international competitions are going on copa america as well as the euros we have preseason to be excited about and enzo mareska got that pep guardiola energy guys um some might even say they look like brothers but the energy the energy from enzo mareska mareska ball we are all for it so there's gonna be a lineup for the first game week against man city right at stanford bridge and to predict that lineup we're gonna go with the strongest players we could say and the most likely that Maresca would trust with such a fixture at that point. What we need to note is that players that are involved in international competitions cannot be involved in preseason. So the key ones maybe would be Caicedo, Enzo Fernandez, Cole Palmer. But Nicholas Jackson's available, <laughs> the GOAT. <laughs> so let's get into it. Um, I want to build the ones to watch in preseason 11. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. To look at the team we're likely to start for the first game week of the Premier League when competitions get proper hot, I think we're going to start with, of course, Robert Sanchez in goal, Kukurea, Reese James being our strongest right back slash right wing back, defensive pairing of Levi Colwell and Tosin, I believe. Caicedo, Enzo Fernandez, Cole Palmer, right wing slash Cam, Kiernan, Kiernan. KDH, Kenan Dewsbury Hall, trusted by Mariska. Definitely looks like a Mariska signing. So probably jump straight into the lineup. He played over 3,000 minutes under Mariska at Leicester last season. And then the right wing, right wingish, or left wing, sorry, left wingish, Christopher Nkunku. And then Jackson will start in the striker role. That's a predicted lineup. But for preseason, let's go, let's go for it one by one, right? We're going to start and go and speak about Kepa Arizabalaga. Kepa went on loan to Real Madrid, got injured, Lunin took over in his stead while Coutinho was injured and Kepa couldn't make it back into the team. It's not to say that Kepa is out of our plans. Mareska could have a different agenda that could switch the whole picking order of goalkeepers at Chelsea between Robert Sanchez, Petrovic and Kepa. The first choice seems... The, the rumor swelling is that Robert Sanchez will be the most trusted and it kind of makes sense when you think about Mares Cabo and good with your feet, goalkeeper. I think the best of three is probably Sanchez. But shot stopping, for now, I'm going to give it to Petrovic. But we have to watch Kepa. I think Kepa is the one to watch in preseason. Will he start games? And if he starts games, it means he could be in the plans. Back four. On the left side, Ben Chua needs to be monitored. 27-year-old, one of the most senior players in our team. So, Chua, what's the plan? Apparently, Man United are looming, trying to see if they can have a replacement for the ever-injured Luke Shaw. Ben Chua was even snubbed by Southgate. I don't know why he's not at the Euros or why he's been on holiday this whole time. But when Ben Chua is fit, he and Reese James are our best fullbacks. But the rise of Marco Correa changes the dynamics so Chua is one to watch in preseason and his form will say something about where we go and then right back I was gonna say we have to look at Reese James because he might get injured again and then boom <laughs> we don't have Reese James but uh Gusto we don't need to really monitor I think Gusto definitely in the plans just turned 20 or 21 Gusto is in the plans we have to watch Alfie Gilchrist can Gilchrist solidify himself into Mariska's plans can preseason put Gilchrist on the map? And he as a player, he has the ability. He showed us a bit of glimpses under Poch. So can Gilchrist make it? That's a good question. <laughs> and then the, in the center back pairing, take a deep breath, y'all. Finish them with PP, public protector. Leslie Fofana alongside Benoit Badiashu. Both men will need to be monitored. And uh, let's focus on Wesley for a second. Wesley Fofana last played for us in the 22-23 season. <laughs> and Wesley Fofana did not play the entire of last, entirety of last season. But Wesley Fofana is only 23 years old. He's still a young defender. So as much as we, we some of us have lost hope and uh, will he ever really get a run of games, we have to be optimistic that this will be Wesley Fofana's first full season for Chelsea. 
somehow, some way, right? <laughs> somehow, guys. <laughs> and then Benoit Buddy Issue on the left. Buddy Issue is a very interesting one because we've signed Torsin, likely to sign Anselmino, even though he might not join immediately. Left footed Benoit Buddy Issue, probably behind Levi Kowo. But Buddy Issue is not a bad defender. Got a, got a good number of minutes under Poch and he's got a good passing accuracy on him. So he might actually surprise all of us and be part of the team might even displace someone definitely want to watch in preseason midfield where it gets a bit interesting tricky interesting nice you know dm roles defensive positioning we'll start with the dm the typical defensive midfielder romeo lavia or leslie ugochuk which one will you keep your eye on more probably romeo lavia because we haven't really seen what he can offer to us as a team he only played 32 minutes and then got injured again like it was so sad but Ugo Chuku showed much more and sometimes he would deputize for Caicedo when Caicedo's not having a very bright game and they're both 20 year olds Ugo Chuku and Lavia are both 20 only 20 years old so for my team I'm gonna go with Lavia because he hasn't really shown us anything and we need to watch him to see what he offers but Ugo Chuku could be the man in Enzo Maresca's plans either or it's such a crazy midfield dynamic <laughs> um, I'm not going to speak on Kesri Cassidy because it's likely we're going to use him as part of a business deal at some point in this window he worked under Enzo Maresca at Leicester but signing KDH probably sends a message that he's not going to go with Cassidy in his plans and KDH will be the preferred midfielder we don't know but it might happen um, but Cassidy, I'm not going to include him in the chat. In the camera, we're going to speak about Connie Chukwemeka. Because Chukwemeka started the season hot. 23-24 season was very good, very bright. You know, getting better game by game under Poch. Definitely could be part of Mareska's plans in the camp position. I don't see why not. Connie Chukwemeka, still also 20 years old. So we're speaking about a midfield three <laughs> of 20-year-olds. Oh, we forgot the man alongside Lavia. We're going to go, actually, you know what? We might as well save him. Yeah, let's speak on Connor Chukwemeka. Because Chukwemeka has everything. He has dribbling ability, passing ability, good vision. And I don't see why he should suffer. Even if we're going to sell him in future, we've included a release clause in his contract. But I think Chukwemeka deserves a shout. He deserves a chance. Next to Romeo Lavia in this team, Andre Santos. Andre Santos has been a surprising one. Because when he arrived... I really felt that he would be part of the first team. Like, I was convinced. He was so good. His numbers were great. But it's been dismal. Couldn't even get into Nottingham Forest's first 11 under Steve Cooper. Got loaned to Strasbourg, where he got a good number of minutes. Uh, and he's proven himself. And supposedly, he's part of Mariska's plans. Further emphasis that we probably won't have Conor Gallagher. But <laughs> Andre Santos excites me. He can be a DM. Oh, he can play defensively, not a typical DM, but he can also play in an attacking sense. He's got a goal in him. So, Andre Santos, one to watch, guys. And we get to the front line. Let's spread the news about Patella FC. Higher viewership. <laughs> in the front line. Right wing, Noni Madweki. Noni Madweki, his career could go exponentially up or in exponentially downwards based on how he performs. Cole Palmer is likely to own the right wing and then drift into midfield in Maresca's system. But Noni Madwiki has a different profile, portfolio to offer. And I think playing him and how he hugs the touchline could be beneficial in certain games. But the number of minutes that he gets next season will be crucial. You know, for a player to have had a good season, impactful in the team, you need to average around 3,000 minutes across a season in all competitions, at least. So, we're not going to get those minutes. That's the first question. I hope he gets at least 2,000 to 2.5, like 2,500 minutes. Um, we have the Conference League, supposedly. We have FA Cup, we have Carabao and the League. We can rotate. Men can get time. Left wing. <laughs> Raheem Sterling could be rejuvenated under Enzo Maresca. I do understand that. And maybe Raheem Sterling just couldn't adapt into Poch's system because he doesn't like Poch. Maybe Poch made him suffer too much at Man City. 
that he couldn't just like the man. But <laughs> no, no, on a serious note, I think Raheem Sterling can't be overlooked. He is another senior figure in our team. No more Thiago Silva, no more much older players. So Sterling being 29, Sterling could be the guy that we turn to in big, like big moments or for big moments. But one to watch in preseason is definitely MM10, Mikhailo Mudrik. Had an okay-ish Euro before getting knocked out and seems he arrived for preseason early. Those are good signs of hunger. But he as a player, does he deserve to be our main starter? One question. And if he does become the left wing we turn to, will Mudrik deliver? Can he deliver? One to watch in preseason and I think his preseason up is the most crucial for him above all else or other players. Because if Modric doesn't do well in preseason, there are options. Christopher Nkunku can just slot slot in. Raheem Sterling himself can slot in. Even Leo Kasodin, <laughs> remember that name. <laughs> and then striker, we could monitor Nicholas Jackson's development because we are hoping that he's more clinical next season. Definitely, definitely. Come on, Jackson. But I'm going to go with Mark Gill. David Washington is still in the team, guys. David Washington, I don't know what's going to happen with that boy. We signed him from Santos in Brazil and he got like, what, 15 minutes under Poch against Brentford. But since then, we haven't seen David Washington. And Mark Yu arrives, an age mate of David Washington's with a bigger stature, looks more physical, might get more chances under Maresca. So I'm going to say we monitor Mark Yu in preseason because I think he could actually surprise us next season. There's Renato Vega to think about, definitely. Uh, we didn't mention KDH's role in this team because I feel he's definitely in the plans. Um, but yeah, that is the 11 of the ones to watch, guys. And let me know your thoughts. You know, which player are you hoping will shine and give us brilliance next season? Thank you for watching. Let's get it, y'all.